basically starts. Because you basically, nobody at Tampa Bay is going to call these because you have to start and go six innings. No matter how good you are, the steel pinners go in one or two tops. But I'd like to offer what my feeling is why Tampa Bay succeeds and no one else does. And I think it's because, and I, I know it was, it was a matter of circumstance last year, they had so many injuries, right? But I think it's because their, their team completely buys into this. And guys like Liam Hendricks and guys like Cam Bedrosan and guys like, uh, I forgot the other name I was going to go for, but when they get put in that spot, they're thinking it's a lesser thing for them. You know, it's like the way that, like, a closer, when he comes in in the seventh for just to get some work, it seems like in those situations they just don't pitch as well because they don't have the mentality psyched up for that. What Tampa did was Tampa took... Tampa started out by putting Sergio Romo as the closer, and they literally let him close... Sorry, as the opener. And he closed, like, three out of... He opened three out of four days, and they said, nope, that's not what we want to do because Romo's a guy that's got the closer mentality. And so what we want to do is we want to put a bunch of guys that are really, really hungry to play, like Stanek and Wood and Yarborough in these spots. And they're going to be grateful for the opportunity to pitch the one inning and show their stuff. And so those guys really went lights out. And last year, you know, when they, when they moved to the, when they moved to the uh, opener situation, they saw their, they saw their ERAs drop by like 0.94 points, nearly, nearly a full point, you know, and uh, depending on, on which thing you look at, they won more games than they lost. But, and I brought this up, this thing about, about the hitting, like this year, if you look at Tampa Bay stats, their first inning pitching, they're second in the area behind the Twins, second in Woba against, behind the Twins, fourth in average against. The Twins have been really good in the first inning. You should look at how good they are. They do it without the opener. But that makes a difference. And the sellout goes for the whole team. I think that what they do on top of getting the pitchers to buy in this completely is they get the batters to buy in it completely. The pitchers go into the first inning with... You know, closer mentality. This is the ninth inning. I let him score a run. I've lost. If I, if I don't let him score a win, I won. And that's all there is to it. The batters on Tampa Bay play like it's an extra inning game. Like, in order for the opener to work, we need to score a run. You know? And you wind up having, like, you know, I looked up some of these things here. It's like, you know, in the first inning, Tampa Bay is fifth in average, ninth in Woba, sixth in on base percentage, right? They, they use a series of four different... Uh, uh, leadoff batters, right? Probably we're most aware of of uh, of, of the, the the rookie Meadows, right? But his his on base percentage is only like three fifty. He's actually the worst of the bunch. When Fam is leading off, his on base is four fifty two. Uh, Yandy Diaz is on base is three eighty three. Uh, Brandon Lowe four seventeen, and all of them have OPSs, which is slugging plus on base of of at least nine forty two, ranging as high for Fam. As one as one point one four eight, they're getting phenomenal production out of the batting side of the cage because that team was forced to do this thing. You know, if, does that make sense? Yeah, I think. It, I mean, getting out to an early lead, it it's it psychologically puts you in the upper hand position. You know, I I, I think there's got to be something to that. And, 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 but I think that it's it's that complete buy-in. The pitchers buy it, but the batters do too. And when you go to the A's, you go to these other things, they're thinking like, oh, this is a stopgap. Who really cares? You know, it was kind of like the same mentality that people would take with a bullpen game. It's like in a bullpen game, if your team runs a bullpen game, you're thinking if we win, that's great. If we lose, hey, we sort of knew it was coming. You know, the one other thing that I have to bring up about this is like, it's depending on how you record their record last year, like the most positive thing said they were 32 and 23 using the opener, but that kind of missed did the opener because it did count in games where the second guy only pitched an inning or so, right? To kind of save the problem. In true opener games last year, they were 19 and 17, which is just barely over 500, which is good, but it's not great. And it's not what you'd really want out of your starting pitcher, right? But if your four and five guys were a game over 500, you'd be pretty happy about that, right? And I think that's the other thing that Tampa has seen is that they went out of their way to, to get three starting pitchers knowing that their four and five guy can be dirt cheap and and still be a game over 500 you know because if you if you if if you if your uh, opener strategy you know wins you just a little over 500 that's probably better than most number 5 starters in the league and 
here's the kicker to boot, as deep as Champa is, they can field an entire pitching staff with paying a few guys $10 million a year for less than most teams can field two pitchers. You know, David Price and uh, Chris Sale, it's about half that price. So, Brendan, what do you think? Can you summarize what we did? Because it's ten fifty. Um, let's see. We were throwing um, throwing dirt at a century of uh, baseball's planning. Um, we know that uh, Big Train Johnson and Christy Matthews are shaking their heads in their graves, and um, and we know that even if Tampa were to introduce a new system where you would have to pitch blindfolded and the other eight guys all just hang out in the infield they're still going to win at least 85 games and, and i think the reason they'll stick around is because it's because it's not because it works but it works well enough considering the price that it pays to, to, to get these guys yeah and i would say you know there might be a little something to uh the you know you have a point about saying you know the weakness of the al i mean the al at least is not as strong as as it usually is the red Sox, as brendan <coughs> and bill or as a professor lament weekly are struggling uh, the Yankees they, they, are, they are lament, they hospital. Lo- you know? They lamented all last year when they won 108 games. It's the nature of the Boston fan. They just lament. Uh, I, guess, I guess you're right, but you Mis- know, miseries are fly and trade. You know, it's well, yeah, and half the Yankees roster has been on the IL. You know, so I, I don't. It, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I love what Tampa's doing. Like thinking outside the box, trying to compete with a much smaller payroll. I mean, I've, i being an ace fan. That's, that's what we've been doing I, for years. So I, I stand by the, the, the fact that the Rays and the twins are the two most fun teams to watch in the American league. And I barely watch the American league. You know, it's like the, what the Rays are doing is, is really, really kind of amazing. Well, <clears throat> wow. That's a good cough. It is 10 52. We normally do trivia this time. Uh, trivia is we're we're all we're all trivia players here. You know, uh, Brendan and I just went up to uh, we went up to uh, Orange City, uh, Orange City to the poker room, and we we won the championship in, in, into which they gave us a trophy. And so I want you guys to refer to me as the award-winning host of the dugout, and Brendan as the award-winning announcer of the dugout because we no, won that award. <laughs> We we're now award winning, but anyway, that, that that's actually we, easy. We, we're, easy. We're, we're major award winners in the same way Darren McGavin in a Christmas Story was a major award winner, or or uh, or uh, Bill O'Reilly. There you go. Um, but we're gonna do this trivia thing. I'm gonna do this trivia a little bit different. I'm gonna. It's a game that I call two tens. I'm gonna give you two questions. One's about baseball. One's not about baseball. And there's ten answers to each. Okay, you get a point for each answer you get right. Some of the, some are going to be easy to get, some aren't. Uh, it's going to be Brendan versus Steve, and Steve, you get to look at the chat room if you want to add some names through there. While you guys yeah, are doing hope- this, while you guys are doing this, because you're going to have to think about two things simultaneously. This is why we're doing it. It's training both halves of your brain. Uh, I'll, I'll 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 give out the thank yous and I'll do the wrap ups before we do the answers. All right. So we have two questions. One's about baseball. Easy question about home runs. All right. Who are the top ten home run hitters in all time of baseball whose last name contains the letter Z? Okay? And the, and the non-baseball question is, we've all watched Saturday Night Live at one point in the thing. There are ten ex-cast members who are dead. So it's name the ten dead cast members of that Saturday Night Live or name the ten top home run hitters that have a Z in their last name. Man, this yeah. is a nice sunny ending to the show, Jeepers. We're, we're always brought to you by despair. But anyway, apparently, yeah. apparently, uh, hopefully, I'm gonna get some help from the chat room on this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna struggle. Yeah, struggle. <laughs> uh, <then> hopefully, uh, sorry. There are people out in the chat room. Lou, uh, Unholy Toledo, Cha Cha. Thank you guys for being there. All you people that are gonna download us in the future. Thank you, you guys for being there. I'd like to thank Debt Neglector for the opening sequence. I'd like to thank uh, Brendan and Stevie for being here. And uh, I thank uh, G. Cinco, my, my boy Nick Gordon, for the closing sequence. Uh, remember, there, uh, I said at the beginning of the show that there was no show after us, but apparently Lou is going to be going on probably at 11.05. So it wasn't on the schedule, but it's new to us. 
anyway, uh, it's new, new. It's new to us, and uh, we thank you all. Uh, you guys need a little bit more time. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I haven't got any help from my friends in the chat room yet. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, chat room, help this guy out. Name the, the, the top ten home run hitters of all time that have a Z in their last name. Name any member of, of Saturday Night Live cast that is dead. I mean, like, three of the deaths were big, huge stories. You should be able to get three pretty easily. I, I, I will do one thing real quick, as this was an option. Is a couple weeks ago I talked about the DFS uh, law that they were going to be passing in Illinois, and that law did pass, but it worked out, and they're... So there you go. See that there? <laughs> they passed a law about gambling in, 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 in Illinois, which allowed gambling there. They did. They were able to hammer out a deal that did not single out DraftKings or FanDuel. But they basically made a rule that instead of putting them in the penalty box for three years, any any gambling site that doesn't have a, a physical presence in Illinois is not going to be able to start their gambling for 18 months. They're going to give the physical guys an 18-month head start, which means that... that uh, Possibly DraftKings could could uh, partner up with their partner Caesar Palace to do a Caesar Palace app, but they're, that's highly unlikely. Maybe they decide to uh, to open up like a, like a restaurant, like an ESPN zone, like a DraftKings zone. But more often than not, it, it just means they're going to have to wait out eighteen months and hope nobody takes the spot. So it's not over for for uh, and, and the part about the part about them redefining what DFS was uh, didn't happen. So there wasn't going to there was going to be a rule in there that said that you couldn't you couldn't tip, select more than four players from one game. All right, so I'm I'm ready to go through these answers here. Which right? Do you want to give me what answers you got, Steve? Well, before I got help on, I'll start with Saturday Night Live. Before I got help, I had Farley, Hart, uh, Belushi, and Hartman. Those are the three. And then, and then the, I got vance ratner and rocket from the uh chat rooms uh, help I, which i don't really know who any of those people are this, which... they put they put down vance that's a tough one yeah and so but then for for b- the baseball one i could only think of two i have uh carl yastrzemski he was number four to- with 452 and todd zeal todd zeal did not make the top wow the top, the top 10 now uh Okay. Actually, nine out of the top ten are, are, are relatively current players, and the, probably the the oldest one out of what I consider relatively current is Kyle Yastrzemski. But these are all guys that you'll know when I say their names. Uh, so um, you, as far as so you got yeah, seven, sure. was that? Uh, yeah, because Zeal doesn't count. So yeah, I guess I got seven. Let's see if if uh, if if you can beat that. Well, I had um, I had four I had four for Saturday Night Live. I did not put down uh, Vance, and I forgot about Gilda Radner, which I feel horrible about. Uh, I did remember Belushi, Hartman, and Farley, and I did remember Charles Rocket, if only because of him dropping the f bomb yeah. uh, on Weekend Update during the uh, ill begotten nineteen eighty season. That kind of led him on a path to uh, doing Earth Girls Are Easy, and then of course so su- suicide. So how much? Um, the the ones that I put down for uh, Z's, I put Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza was number six. Oh God, what a, that's a good one. Um, a Rod. A Rod's number one, six ninety six. Uh, of course, uh, Manny and uh, David Ortiz. That's two and three, five fifty five, five forty one. Um, <laughs> and I also put down. Uh, I keep forgetting which Zimmerman was the pitcher and which one was the hitter for the Nationals. Ryan, was, Zimmerman uh, Ryan Zimmerman was. A, he's not yeah. on the list. He's not. Okay. Um, and I also put Juan Gonzalez and Tony Perez. Juan Gonzalez was number five with four hundred thirty-four. Tony Perez was number eight with three seventy-nine. The um, on the SNL side, you miss some really weird ones like George Coe was somebody that people forget was on the cast the first year, but he's dead. Jan Hooks died. I know that Unholy Toledo, uh, Unholy Toledo uh, mentioned Mister Mike, but it was it was Mondo Mike. That's who I knew he was talking about. Michael Donahue was dead. And the newest member to the deceased club is Tony Rosado from the from the Joe Piscopo years. On the home run side, you got Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, Carl Stramski, Juan Gonzalez, Mike Piazza. That's one through one, two, three, four, five. So that's one through six. You have Aramis Ramirez with number seven at three eighty six. Oh. At number number eight was Tony Perez. Number nine was the still active Nelson Cruz. At 372. And the last guy was from the old days, Johnny Mize at 359. So I think you won, Brad.